Today guys, we're going to be talking about the Bass Pro 170, specifically the 2019 model. And we'll go over all the basics of what it offers and what it doesn't have. If you have additional comments after the video, go ahead and put it in the comments and I'll try to answer whatever I can. So the first thing that I'll talk about is the trailer. So on this specific model, there is a neat feature for those who are short on space. Normally, you'd have the full um, trailer with tongue, but this one has a breakaway swing. Which is going to save you a fair amount of space, especially in garages that aren't as long. It does come with the gravel shield. Certified trailer. Just a pretty standard uh, lift trailer jack here. Nothing crazy. 1200 pound. I will note that it does not come with a spare tire. I had to get a spare tire aftermarket. It does, however, have um, bars for the spare tire to hang on. It just does not come with the mounting bracket or tire itself, but you can get that pretty cheap um, at your farmer fleet or wherever. Up front here you have just a real basic standard um, manual winch for winching the boat up and locking it down. Comes with your standard safety as well as the main locking one so your boat doesn't come flying off down the highway. Coming to the back here you have, this is not sure what kind of composite material. Feels some kind of a plastic, maybe reinforced with metal brackets underneath. You've got a, comes with Lodestar tires. Um, they are here. SD1885, 80, R13. Radial tires. One thing I'll note that a lot of people like to upgrade is the suspension, which is just currently a single. A lot of people like to upgrade that to a double or even a triple. Um, gives your tire a little bit more space, which people, uh, sometimes if you go in the forums for Pro 170s, they will even be able to put bigger tires on it, but especially it helps with a lot of the, uh, it's really bouncy and soft with just that one leaf spring. So upgrading that is on my list of things to do, but because I don't travel too, too far with the boat, um, it's lower on my list. Uh, this does not come with it. This is just um, a snow plow um, flag poles that I attached to the trailer just to help so that you can see it when you're backing down because when there's no boat on the trailer as you know it can really disappear off your map behind your truck. So coming around to the back side here, sticking to trailer components for now. You've got just a real basic transom saver, um, connects down there with a quick disconnect and then it comes up to here um, and it's just got one of these holding it to your motor. Um, I've heard on the forums a lot about this rubber rots out quickly. Um, that's not really, I mean it depends where you live, it's about sitting outside how it's stored. Um, there are probably better transom savers, but this one does the job um, out the out the door. So it only comes with this real basic cheap um, friction buckle. We basically tighten it and clamp this down, um, which again does the job. But one upgrade that is definitely worth it is to get one of these um, buckles that. Both are easy to remove and then reinstall.
and just like that you're ready to go um, it saves a lot of time especially for people that are nervous at the dock I mean you can get this off or in really quickly um, doesn't matter what model they have generic ones on Amazon to the fancy ones to sell Pass Pro. You can read reviews on that though, but just know that your boat's only gonna come with the cheaper friction one. Trailer lights are just your basic. Comes with the two rear brake blinkers, and then on each fin you've got side marker lights as well. And then again, coming up to the front, another side marker on, on each side there. So I'll throw some numbers for people who care about that kind of stuff in regard to the trailer. It's got the custom fit single axle trailer that's powder coated with that gal shield. Impact corrosion and chip protection for improved durability it says. It's got uh, silver metallic powder coated wheels that are 13 inches. Radial tires like I mentioned. Um, hubs designed for quick and easy uh, hub lubrication meaning it's got those quick snap on um, grease fittings. Uh, it's got that space saving sw uh, swing away tongue to reduce storage length that I mentioned. It's got the pivot up jack with swivel wheel. Again, just a real basic jack um, right there and it does fold up for transport obviously. Um, comes with the uh, nylon strap and bow safety strap. The outboard motor support to reduce hull and transom stress while towing. It's got carpeted bunks to protect the hull. Again, all pretty standard features on a trailer. Submersible LED lighting, it states. So these lights are LED. And then obviously it comes with um, a little bit nicer than safety chains. They're like safety cables, I would say. I don't know, people have different um, opinions on them, but it comes with um, two safety cables versus um, your traditional chain link. Um, and they kind of coil up too, so they don't drag, especially if your vehicle's lower, that's kind of nice. So the overall towing length would be 23 foot two inches. And the package height would be about six foot to include that rear seat and engine. When you fold down the uh, engine, down flat against the transom, it does come down to a, about the storage length of 20 foot one inches for those trying to measure garages. The average package weight is about 1,840 for those interested about towing and if their vehicle will be able to tow it or not. That is the base package uh, weight without options. The boat itself is 16 foot 8 inches and the bottom width is 4 foot 6 inches. Has a fuel capacity of about 11.4 gallons. Seats 4 comfortably and is only recommended for 4 with a max weight limit of 555 pounds. And a max person motor and gear weight of 980 pounds. And we'll start with the motor package that I have, which is the Mercury 40, four stroke. They have several different packages you can get from the 9.9 .9 to the 20, to the 25, and the 40, and the 50, as well as the 40 jet powered, for those that are interested in jet boats. This is, like I stated, the 40 ELPT four stroke. In case anyone's going to ask, as far as speeds for the 40 horsepower, obviously it'll depend on weight as well as the prop, which this is just the factory prop, which is the Mercury Black Max. I can't remember at time of filming if this was steel or, or the aluminum one. But it does average um, 27 to 32 miles per hour. So without further ado, we'll hop in the boat and show you some of the features in the boat. It comes standard with a, uh, what I consider a very basic Minn Kota, and that is a 45 pound thrust, 12 volt edge, um, five speed. In my opinion, it's a little underpowered, even for as small as the boat is. Um, that's one thing that I might recommend upgrading in the future as well. 
but for now it gets the job done. Um, I would say 90% of the time I am either on 5 or 4. Anything below that, it's just not giving it enough power, um, at least in the lakes in my area, um, to keep the boat um, the direction I'm wanting to go. The boat comes again standard with two posts right there and two chairs that are detachable and removable and just a standard post mount there and the post screws into that. For anyone who might not know, the boat is it is a marine grade aluminum ally boat. That is what the bass trackers are known for. So for anyone who's looking for fiberglass, this is it's probably not what you would be interested in. And back here in the rear, we have two full-size seats. And getting into the captain's seat here, you have three main dials. It's gonna come with your fuel, your RPMs, and your miles per hour. Pretty basic. And it's got your kilometers per hour as well for those who use that system. On the left hand side, you're gonna have your key ignition. A uh, fuse for the aerator, a fuse for the bilge, and the switch for the aerator and the bilge. Again, the bilge is when you forgot to put in the uh, plug and your boat starts sinking. You flip that on and start pumping out the water after you put the plug back in. Um, it does not come with an auto bilge though, so that may be something that you want to upgrade to in the future or consider when you're buying this boat. It does not have an auto bilge. It's manual only. And then flick it up for aeration of the live well. On the right hand side here we see there is the navigation lights as well as the auxiliary lights. There is a fuse for the lights in the horn and then there is the horn itself. Um, the boat comes standard with a real basic Lawrence uh, hook four times. Again, this is just a real basic model, but does what you need to do, which is tell you your depth, real basic fish finder, um, real basic graph. Coming over here, I added the compass. Yes, I know it's near electrical, but in the case that you need a compass, you're gonna have to probably assume your electrical is not working, which is why you're using a manual compass. Coming over here, you have your throttle, forward and back. Um, it comes with a trim up and trim down button. The boat itself, real quick, there's also your kill switch that you gotta wear. And then coming in the back, I'll also note that there is a, another electric trim on the motor itself. There is a manual pump, and I know on the motor itself too. If you lift the lid off, there it is. an emergency rope so that you could start the boat manually if needed. Hopefully you don't have to deal with that ever, but you never know. The gas cap is located in the back right rear, easily accessible for when you're at the gas pump. To the middle of the boat, ignore these steps. This is something I built, it does not come with the boat. This area will be empty and trimmed out to the floor. On this specific model, they did not have storage here. It was just an open L. And I'll kind of show my storage later, but for now, we're gonna lead up to the live well. So the live well is a um, bow 15 gallon or 56.78 liter aerated live well with bait bucket holder and stand pipe overflow. So that's the bait bucket holder, so just an indentation, nothing crazy. The overflow is just this tube. So when you unscrew this tube, it drains out the rear. But when you put the tube in, it allows 
this bucket to fill up up until again it gets up to here and then it trickles back out and goes out this is the intake pipe um, nothing's too fancy about this one it's a 500 gallon per hour aerator fill pump and um, obviously you can see it's a molded one piece with rounder corners for easy cleanup to protect your fish so that's what it's talking about here um, it does not however have a um, timed or automatic aeration it's manual only as I showed you so you will manually have to be aerating your fish with fresh water um, if you're doing a tournament or something so if you're a huge tournament fish or something to keep in mind that this is just a basic live well so real quick on the left is where um, you put your boat plug in PSA always remember to put your plug in your boat this middle one is going to be where it takes fresh water in for the live well and this one over here is going to be um, where it would dump out uh, the excess water from the live well please also always carry a spare plug it does come with four cleats two at the front and two at the rear of the boat I note that Bass Trekker calls this a sport steering well and it's a single cable for those who care and I forgot to mention on the council there is one old school 12 volt but you can put those little adapters for USB in here and it works just fine the boat itself as I'm sure you've noted is your standard marine grade carpet throughout I don't know if they offer different upgrades to different materials but this was all that was offered to me at the time so before we get into the storage here, I wanted to show you one of the main cool features about the tracker boats are something called the VersaTrack. And it is simply a molded track system where whether it's aftermarket like these plates I made for hooking my Bumimi top to or you know, fishing pole holders, what have you. I bought a, uh, a mount for another the graph up front because underneath here, if you unscrew this, there is a open already port made for um, installing another graph or other electrical item. So now we'll start with the interior and storage um, starting in the rear here. The boat comes standard with like I mentioned boat comes with a standard 11.4 gallon uh, fuel capacity and as noted the caps on that side easily accessible as far as the electrical system goes you have um, standard stowable navigation lights with LED courtesy light at the bow um, bow and console courtesy lights which I'll show you you have two battery trays, um, of which mine came with the interstate battery for one cranking and trolling, that guy down there, and a 12 volt trolling motor harness and receptacle, obviously all stuff that you would expect to come with it. And the wiring system is wrapped in abrasion resistant protective conduit. And then you have your cranking battery down there as well. Um, one upgrade again I see a lot on the forearms is turning these batteries this way and fitting another one there to set up for a 24 volt so that you can upgrade the trolling motor. Haven't done that myself again. Um, I've kind of enjoyed not spending a ton of money on the boat and only upgrading what I've wanted so far. But little knowledge if you are interested. So, in regards to storage now, it comes with two lockable storage um, containers. The first one is in the rear, and the second one is on the left side here, uh, which is going to be your rod locker, and then this is just kind of a plain storage. You can see it's a decent size. Uh, one thing, again, I'll note is the boat does not come with an onboard battery charger. For me, I was able to get it worked out with the dealer. They were more than happy to install this. They're not too expensive and they want you to buy the boat. So most of the time when you're working on a deal with buying a boat, 
you can talk your person into um, throwing in. Um, again, just a standard, this is a Minn Kota digital for two banks, because there's two batteries. And then they just routed it through the back here. You simply plug it in, leave that door open so the heat doesn't build up, and you're good to go. Next up here, under the passenger side seat, you have um, another storage area slash where they put all of the items that are required. So the bolt actually only comes with what I'll show you here. And that is a fire extinguisher, a miniature ore, should you need that. And then this is the front navigation light. And then the um, rear courtesy light that you'll need to legally have is in the fishing storage locker, which I'll show. But you can see there's plenty of storage room. So I was able to store just a few extra things, a trailer jack, um, a beach umbrella, flares, And then the standard throwable, which you'll need in, I think almost every state requires that because it's Coast Guard. Real quick, as I mentioned, here's that side courtesy light that they mentioned. And then we'll go into, again, here, the lockable rod storage. And I'll note that it is just an empty rod locker. It's just open space, there's nothing back there. Um, some boots have the tubes, you know, that they slide into, and this is just wide open, just a huge open, up to probably right about where the back end of that hoop is, I'd say. Um, some people don't like that. Some people say this is sloppy and unorganized. Um, I kind of like it because, I mean, you could stack poles in here for days. The key to success for getting your poles in and out for me was simply just putting these rod socks on it and they slip in and slip out easily and the eyelets are all protected. I haven't had any issues at all. Um, again, in case anyone asks, yes, in the storage locker as mentioned is the rear, the rear light. And again, worth mentioning real quick, this is your live well, but if you don't have any use for the live well at that time, it also doubles for storage. I put the temporary stuff that normally I'll have out. Uh, I just throw it in here for the drive and then when I get there, I obviously take it out so the live well is empty so I can use it. But again, more storage inside the boat. Lastly for the standard storage is this up front um, and the middle storage here. And you can see it kind of goes back. I'd say about two feet long by about a foot, foot and a half open. Um, I kind of just store the nets and whatever, the anchor, random gear in here. So you may be thinking that's not a lot of storage. And I would have to agree, it's not a lot of storage, which is why I um, made up this simple um, storage locker um, and the different models, um, they come with this section now formed up that way they come formed up from here and go that way it's still open right here but again formed from here from the council over and it's just like a hollowed out little open area you can stick stuff in so on the newer models you'll see that but I made these just to stick all my lures in just a simple design um, it's just some angle bars and stuck together and carpeted it nothing crazy something that you can easily do yourself if you have the 2019 and want more storage i think i did this in i don't know a few hours maybe it didn't take too long and then i added some just cheap little cup holders because that is one thing that this boat does lack is cup holders The only cup holder that comes stock on the boat is right up here in front of um, the driver's or the captain's seat, just over past the um, graph here, which is kind of a weird spot. 
So one thing that made the boat easier to enjoy and made it a little bit more, I think you can call it family friendly, is adding the bimimi top here. And I'll get this unfolded and show you what that is. So they're pretty cheap. They're on Amazon if you want one. You just undo the uh, wrap here. And then next you're gonna grab this and just simply pull it out. And I'll need two hands for this next part, but you're simply gonna pull this up and over and there'll be a, a leg right there with the clips that are gonna clip to that bracket I made there so that it stays forward. So once you lock it to the front there, you'll just lock it in these back tubes as well. And then you have a really nice shade on those hot days. Um, it also comes with clamps as well. Little C-clamps that stick to this and you can attach a beach towel or something and add extra shade or a little privacy. Okay, and here it is from a different angle. Plenty of height and just adds a nice spot to get out of the sun after a long afternoon of fishing. And I think a lot of people appreciate that and maybe get the family more excited about going on a bass boat versus your traditional recreational boat. One other thing that I thought would be worth mentioning that I thought was a good upgrade is the uh, keel guard that goes underneath the bottom of the boat, especially with it being a melded, a welded aluminum boat, that little extra peace of mind uh, keel shield. So we're back to where we started. Um, overall, I think the boat works for someone who has a smaller property, maybe not a huge garage or a lot of work, uh, a lot of room to work with. Um, it is what I would consider an entry level bass boat um, on the fine line of a bass tournament boat. I know some people may say, no, you can't fish with that, but I don't see any issues with it. Um, it's a step above the classic, but obviously it's still below the 175, which is where most people consider that to be a normal bass tournament entry bass boat. But again, for me, the price point was good. The size was good and what it offered was everything that I needed and I think is everything that most people will need. A lot of people tend to overbuy and then realize later that it was too much boat for them and that they didn't need all that. Now they have this huge payment on something that they're really not going to use as much as they thought they were going to use and so they end up selling it or downgrading anyway. But on the flip side I've also seen people that buy a 170 and then later on wish they would have bought a 175 or end up upgrading to a 175. But for me, again, this size was the perfect size.